things are about to get heavy. This is Azel's TV with part 9 of the Wooden Clock Project. Let's do this. Boop, boop. My job is getting easier and easier. Anyway, what we're here having is a couple of protractors. I'm going to use these to calculate the angles needed for the crank arms for the servos to move the crank wheel around for the Geneva gear to work the clock and everything else. I'll show what I mean. If you remember before I took all apart, the crank assembly looked like this. So we've got the red, green and blue crank arms and wheels. And I've drawn it out here. And I've measured very accurately, as well as accurate as I can, distances to the one, t well, one tenth of a millimetre. What I'm going to do with that is make a ten times scale model so I can measure the angles of these, this part here and this part here as I rotate everything. Now, these are the parts I've cut out for the model. So this distance between this pivot point here and this and there to the centre of that and there to the centre of that are all carefully calculated and scaled up as accurately as I possibly can so if there's any errors they'll be reduced down by the fact that this is 10 times bigger now these bits cut out here will be so it's this way around go in here like that and it will line up with these pointers and this will glue in place onto a, a, if I can find a big enough surface and let's move that about a count off the angle here so starting from where are we zero degrees and I can mark each one down so next up will be to pull this together find a surface big enough to mount everything on and uh, start reading off angles this ought to be fun oh boy well I don't have a surface big enough so I've had to use my lounge door so I mean things are a bit echoey as well because I've got this big slab of material here bouncing sound off. But I've got everything stuck down with double sided tape. Let's backtrack a bit and I'll show you how I got here. I've pressed fit these on here like that. I was going to glue them but they're on there pretty tight. They're not going to go anywhere. There's plenty of slack there for them to move without anything slipping. On the backs I've got double sided tape. So I can peel all that off and hopefully that will be enough to stick it to the door. I guess we'll see. Let's do some sticking. Now I need to mount this here, but before I do that, I need to mark a spot here and here with a line drawn perpendicularly down. So I can use that to reference off the second linkage arm which will be up here. And then the link will go across. I don't want to make, don't want to make any marks on the door, so I'm going to make a tiny pencil mark here, which I can use to centre this cross here and there and then stick some masking tape down and draw a line on that. I've measured this distance here with calipers and then plotted a point here and on the tape further up here out of shot of the camera and then just join these two points together with a straight edge. Now the reason I've not gone all the way down here with the masking tape is but I wanted the surface for this to stick onto and I was worried it wouldn't stick properly onto the masking tape because it's got quite a sheen finish. So I've left a blank area, so I'll just align this crosshair with that pencil mark. And then I can get that exactly perpendicular and upright to reference everything else off of. Here is everything now stuck down. I've got this exactly aligned and I've got this exactly aligned. To do that I've used Pythagorean theorem. The square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. So we know the length of this, and we know the length of this, so we can calculate the length of this. Easy. Now I can move this through its full range of motion, like that, and read off the angles here in relation to the angles here. So I'm going to move this around 10 degrees at a time, mark off that angle and then that angle, like that, that angle, that angle, again. I keep doing it for the full 360 degrees. And that will give me the lookup table for both these angles 
and how they correspond with one another. Alright, I've labelled both these protractors here. I've got theta for this angle and A for this one. This will be moved around the full 360. So I've called it one theta. This one just swoops back and forth like this across the full range as you've just seen. So next step is to mark off 10 degrees at a time into this table here. And back to zero again. And here is what we end up with. So these are the angles that the servo arm has to move through to make the Geneva mechanism go through these angles from zero to 350 degrees back to zero in 10 degree steps. So when the crank wheels are mounted on the servos, they'll move the crank lever, rotate around this crank arm like that this crank wheel will move through these angles in dark blue there and make this move around like this to these angles so now I can program all of these numbers into a microcontroller and use that microcontroller to rotate this round by the servo now the more mathematically minded of you all still watching this video are probably thinking well, hang on, them swinging back and forth like this, like a pendulum almost, is very much like a sine function. So why not just plot a sine wave and program that on the fly to run this? That's a lot easier than all these numbers, surely. I'll show you why. I've used Open Office to plot the angle that the servo arm needs to be, A, against theta. And it looks almost like a perfect sine wave, which is what you expect. But it's not. I've plotted the same one with a red actual sine wave over it, and as you can see, it varies wildly. So I can't just plot a sine wave to move the servo arm because it won't move the crank arm in the perfect circle. In fact, if I plot both waveforms needed for each servo, They will plot a path like this in blue. I actually want the red path, which is the which would be the perfect sine wave. And then the second channel, which is driven 90 degrees out of phase. So because of that huge variation, I'm having to use a lookup table instead to tell the servo arm where to go. You could calculate a formula because you know the angles of each part of the linkage assembly and each length of each part of the linkage assembly but the formula would be very very complex so I'd have to work out what that formula is and then program it into the Arduino so it's actually a lot easier to build the model to do all the man manual measurements and then plot out these numbers so ultimately we have all of these figures these two we can ignore they're the sine and the cosine for the circle these three are the ones we want theta is the angle that the crank arm needs to go around a is the angles required for one servo arm and B is the angles required for the second servo arm. I'll show you more of this when I actually come to building it, which will be st I'll start building it next week. But for now that'll be it. Okay, that I think is where I'm gonna end this episode. Because we're getting quite into it and I can't do anything more now until I actually get the servos and start programming it. So I'll start doing that next week. So get subscribed, hit that notification button so you can keep up to date with what I'm doing. I'll put out a new video next week and I'll hopefully start making some stuff and getting something programmed, doing some electronic work, so that could be fun. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next Tuesday.